audience understands yeah. this a little bit more clearly. What exactly mm -hmm. are we doing with this mortgage? What is the end result? Once I've pulled on this, is, is, is this something I pull on forever? Does it eventually yeah. run out? Yeah. So again, a couple of things here. There's too, there's too many unknowns for this lady to really solve anything directly right here with the mortgage. And here's why. If she's starting a business, right? I, don't, I wouldn't even bring in my mortgage broker at this stage yet, right? I mean, we right. got to know what's going to happen yet. with that. It's going to be a year probably before she profits, depending on what kind of business. She, I, I don't know. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of things here. So it's got to have a lot of flexibility. This is why I try to build relationships. Like I'm much more about building relationships and working with my clients intentionally all the time right. because th things are going to change for this lady a lot in between now and retirement, starting a business. I mean, there's so many things. So we got to have a lot of flexibility. We can't make any too, like too many rigid moves right now with the right. mortgage, but I will answer your question. I would bring in two professionals in this circumstance. I'd bring in my first lien HELOC guy and I bring in my Heckam lady that I work with. Right. And, and they're incredible. And, um, you know, I didn't get your permission to share with you, share their names. So that's why I'm referring to them in that way on your channel, but, okay. um, they would do an analysis. Like they would just sit down with her and say, what's in your best interest that aligns with your priorities. It makes the most sense for you mathematically. Mm -hmm. I would leave that to them. I'd stay completely out of that. But right. the re end result of the HECM is unknown. And here's why. We don't know what the property value is going to do over her lifetime. Um, what's going to happen with the HECM is um, she probably doesn't have enough equity, even with the appreciation and velocity banking strategy, to actually pull anything out at this stage. Right. Um, but she might, and, and probably not even, but she might have enough to just stop the mortgage payment. Yeah. So with so the let's, mortgage payment, yeah, let's, let's go back to the whiteboard. Yeah, let's just talk about that a little bit. So the Heckam is a yeah. cash flow tool. It, yeah, potentially. It, yeah, if she gets right. if she gets access to the line, it could be. Yeah, but but no, it's a cash flow tool in the sense that it'll improve cash flow by Correct. stopping the mortgage payment of principal and right. interest. So yep. it stops it stops the payment. Yeah. Right, and if I'm not mistaken, you have to have at least fifty percent or more in equity. Correct. It's changed a little bit, I think. And again, this is out of my area of expertise, but I think it's that's the rough kind of number, but it depends right. on age and interest rates and stuff like that. Right. So, I, so, but so yeah, we can just, as an example, use that. Definitely problem. say at least definitely over 50 plus percent has to be yeah. in available equity in the property. Equity. And yeah. so now let's just say someone did this or someone has this. At this point, what is what is happening once the payment stops? Do I now get a a certain amount of money that I choose to pull out, or is it a set amount? They, I think, they determine the line of credit based on what what the parameters are, and it goes based on age, interest rates, and equity. So I think they would determine what you're eligible as, like a draw. Okay. Now. Um, the Heckam's kind of cool because your potential line of credit can grow by your interest rate every year. So people can theoretically have more line utilization down the road, um, depending on a couple of different factors. So for her, I, I think that's in this specific example, that's a potential benefit, but really it would just be, you know, part of that 2341 is taxes and insurance. I don't know how much is escrow, you know, a portion of that would, be reduced. And I think that would, you know, exponentially get her to her goal. Like I look at it like this, and this is where I spend a lot of time with my mortgage experts, right? Let's say that out of that 2,300, and again, I don't know property tax in Florida. Let's say, I mean, let's just say, you know, 500 of that is taxes and insurance, I guess, I, you know, whatever. Yeah. So let's say that, you know, 1800, 1850 a month is principal and interest, right? Mm -hmm. How much would she need to put into something to generate eighteen fifty a month, net of taxes, net of fees, net of risk every single month? Very right, hard that, to do. A lot of money, yeah. right? <laughs> a lot of money. We're, we're, so, we're talking multiple six figures. I mean, yeah. Just so to, to get that result in cash flow, I think a mortgage broker is better handling this than somebody like me or the financial advisor, right? Like. You yeah. know, because they can make a bigger impact to her retirement than I could. So yeah. that's why I, I spent a lot of time having them come in and do analysis for her. I think that analysis at a certain point would be very appropriate because 
you know, we just don't know. We don't, we don't know what gotcha. it's going to look like. If, if her numbers were closer to like 600 in value and 250 in debt, then I think she'd probably be more of a candidate uh, based on, you know, okay. what the mortgage brokers have been instructing me on. But yeah, I mean, you can see how much of an impact it would make for her in retirement. For sure. So as of right now, obviously the Heckam wouldn't make sense and it may not even make sense three years from now, but maybe a year or two, it just depends on how quickly we can move with the, the velocity banking method here.